Okay, this is Mike Soares of Racy Tenor Guitars. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, Tunematic Bridge, Tom Bridge. Uh, now, if you stumbled on this uh, video and you're doing a 6 string or 12 string Tunematic, uh, please watch the end of this video. It'll help you out. Basically, this video is going to be on using a tunematic for a tenor guitar, octave mandolin, even a regular mandolin, bazooki, stuff like that for an arch top guitar. But uh, we're taking a standard six string and we're going to convert it to a nice tenor bridge. And like I say, it could also be used as a four string or an eight string. Uh, right now, you can use a standard mandolin bridge which works fine. Uh, intonation's not going to be as good as the tunematic that you can adjust. But if you look at here, the the end one here, the height is basically about the same. So in order to get that, first thing I need to let you know is there are different tunematic bridges. This is what I call a Gretsch style tunematic. It has a little over an eighth inch. Uh, bottom on it. The, uh, it's rosewood and uh, it doesn't have the, the feet. It's not a higher one. A lot of the Gretsch's use a lower arch top bridge. This is the style you want to use, the one with the, the flat across the whole top bridge. Okay? And this one comes with masking tape on the bottom and it has the screws which are adjustable it, uh, they usually come with a little Allen wrench. You can raise the post, the adjusting post, up and down on this. Okay, but this is what we're going to use. The one with the smaller bottom. And what we did here was we took the, the posts and we adjusted them so that they're just below the wood. You don't want them sticking out because you don't want to damage or scratch the top of your guitar. So that's the first thing we did. And we also fitted this to the top of the arch on the guitar or mandolin, whatever we're using. The next step, we removed two of the saddles, the first and six string saddle. And what we did on this, we also we adjusted the uh, adjustment post on the bottom so that they're not sticking out. And in this case, we ground them down so that they do not stick above the bridge. Okay? You can leave them long if you want. You can always drill out the caps that we're going to put on. We're going to show you how to cap this off to give it a nicer look. But you can do it either way. You can grind these down once you have them set, or you can just drill them out later on. Okay? But so right now we've converted this to a four string, and we have the post adjusted. We have the uh, base all set up. Now, what we did here is we actually filled the two voids where we removed the saddles. Okay, we filled this with uh, five minute epoxy, two part, and that's so that the sound doesn't go into the hollow block underneath. It actually extends right down into the post, so it gives us a, a, a bigger, cleaner tone by filling these pots up on each side. Okay. Then what we did was we took the uh, uh, we can go back to this one actually. This was the almost finished product. Okay, what we did with this here was we made caps to go over the ends. And what, how we did that, uh, I'm going to make a video later on in the summertime that will show you how to make a jig for making small parts out of uh, for guitars. What we did here was we made the caps on each side out of the plywood. We used a furniture grade plywood and uh, we set that as just three quarter inch thick uh, high and we also made a frame around it. The reason for the frame is so that when you put the router on there your router is not going to tip off the edge of the center part that you need so the router will follow it and you want to leave enough room here to fit your router bit in around 
the thing so it doesn't hit. The other thing we did here, a little trick, we put mat we put blue tape, painter's tape, and we put this on both sides. Then we take our pick guard material that we're going to use to make our caps. We put blue tape under that. And then what we do is we use crazy glue, a little bit of crazy glue on this side, and that gets glued to this side. So what happens is after you router out your piece, which is going to be something like this here, your cap, it allows you to peel it off without damaging your, your jig. And then you just peel the blue tape off of each end, and you got a nice clean jig, you're ready to go for the next step. So that's basically how we do our little parts. Okay, and as you can see here, <coughs> we have a cap and then what we do is we glue the cap onto each end of the bridge and that covers up the first and sixth string gives it a much nicer cleaner look like I say if you want you can then drill through each side to allow that post to come through but we like to uh, grind them down Okay, and then after we do that, what we do is we actually sand down the saddles. The reason for that is because the standard spacing on these saddles, okay, which has been a problem even with a lot of six string, is the spacing is too small for what we're going to use it for. We're looking for about a 12 millimeter. This is like a nine and a half. Now I understand that they make these in different sizes, but it's very hard to find the 11 and a half and 12 inch spacing on these bridges for some reason. There's a couple of companies in China that are making them, but apparently nobody's ordering them. So they're very hard to find. So in this case, we need to relocate the string grooves. Okay, and in order to do that, what we do is we set the bridge onto the guitar Space our strings accordingly to match the line up with our fingerboard uh, evenly as possible. We do the first and last string first, leaving the same amount of space. So if it's like an eighth inch space on this side, we leave an eighth inch space on this side. Then we go and center our two middle strings. Okay, and then what we do after that is we slightly move them over. We use a Dremel tool with a disc okay a metal disc and we gently score in where our strings are going to lay on the bridge like that then we take the same tool and again gently we open up where needed usually on the first two strings there's no need depending upon the strings you're using you can also use this to make a a, 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 a mandicello bridge so in that case you want to open up these spaces a lot more. So you want these spaces to be able to comfortably fit each string that you're going to use in there. Again, if it's a tenor, you want four grooves in there for mandolin, octave mandolin, mandocello, uh, bazooki. Uh, you want two grooves cut into each one evenly. Once we cut the grooves, then what we do is we take the bridge out of the guitar and we put it into a buffer and we buff down the grooves. We get them nice and clean and smooth. This is a finished bridge on the guitar. Nice evenly spaced across the strings. Uh, these have been all polished out. The grooves have been opened up to uh, properly fit the strings. And after that uh, I don't find it necessary. They usually work out fine, but if you want to, uh, after you get that all set up, you can go to your fingerboard and you can check the height of each string to see if it matches up with the arc or the arch of your fingerboard. So you want each string to be about the same height off the fingerboard or a little bit higher on your bass strings than your treble strings and if you need one that is a little bit too high you can always go in here grind this down a little bit more and buff it out 
but you want this nice buff clean. Okay, and that's basically how we make the bridge. And as you can see, it has a nice clean look for a tenor guitar. Also works for well for a mandolin. Great thing about it is you could set up a, a great setup on the intonation. Now, something that we do not do and uh, makes it better. Okay, we do not do that because when we make our tenor guitars, they're ordered in all different tunings: A D G C. E B G D E A D G A E C G and others. Okay, sometimes we also make what we call a four string mandocello. We can also make these at the eight string mandocellos. But the point is, we don't do it because we don't know what this is going to wind up being in the end. And the customer may change it. What we recommend is once you have your guitar mandolin or whatever you're using and you have it set the way you want, you have your action, everything set up, your bridge set up, uh, you need to decide on what strings you're going to use permanently. Okay, and I say permanently because when you change string sizes, the intonation on your bridge can change. And what will make this bridge a lot better is if you get your standard set gauges on your string, what you like, the tension you like, the clean sound that you like, once you've got that, you've got your intonation all set up, what we, what we do is go in here onto the screws and put a little drop of crazy glue. Crazy glue is going to lock your saddle in. Uh, a lot of people don't like tunematic bridges because they have a little bit of play in these saddles and the saddles can some of them can move up or down if it's, it's a less expensive one they do have more expensive ones where you can actually lock your saddles in uh... they still have a little bit movement and it's still a problem because you've got all the spacing underneath that allows the saddles to go up and down so you're always going to ha never have direct contact okay so what we recommend and again why we said we're six string people to hold on to the end of the video is after you crazy glue these in, just a drop, you can remove your bridge and then fill each side of this cavity with the two-part epoxy. Mix it up, put it in a drop at a time, let it settle down to the bottom. Uh, if the, 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 the uh, epoxy starts to uh, stiffen up, make a new batch. You want it nice and thin so it drops in to each cavity. And what that will do is that will give you better continuity across the whole bridge okay it eliminates these hollow spots where you're going to lose sound it also locks the saddles in but now because it locks the saddles in you're never going to be able to adjust this again so you always have to stay with your same strings and that's basically it hope this helps thank you again this is Mike Soares at Ceraci Tenor Guitars